Hey everybody, it's Tiss here again. Just want to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about mental health. We're about four weeks into our lockdown now, and we really need to be making sure we're looking after our mental health. You know, there's been a lot of pressure, there's been a lot of change happening around us, and it takes time for our thoughts to catch up, um, and our emotions as well, and how we process all of that together. So I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you about how we can look after our mental health at this time. You know, there's a lot of videos out there, a lot of people are doing Joe Wicks, for example, looking after their physical health at this time. But you know, we all have a mental health. You know, there's, there's a spectrum. You're very fit and healthy, or you're not. And we all are somewhere on that line. And we tend to fluctuate at different levels. Now that, we know that with physical health, but it's, it's the same with our mental health. And we need to be looking after that. So a couple of things, you know, there's been so much change over the last few weeks. Um, for a lot of people, um, it's been very traumatic. You know, I know for me, the first week, I was sort of just in the zone, head down, get this job done. We've got to get used to this new thing. Let's set systems in place. Let's get, get the routines right. And then about 10 days in or so, it just hit me. You know, I had quite a tearful day where I just, all of a sudden, the realities of how things were now hit me. And it really took me a bit of time to process that, you know, was I ready for my eldest child to go to secondary school? Had I raised him right? Had I taught him right? Was he actually really ready? Was I ready to see my kid grow up like that? And those kind of things can, um, if we overthink them, they can become quite a big part of what's going on in our wrestle at the time. You know, for some people, um, in fact, for the whole nation, it's been a bit of a culture shock. You know, growing up as I did traveling a lot, culture shock was a huge thing. You'd move to a different country, different culture, and you'd have to adapt. And I remember when I was working um, at a Christian center a while back and uh, these couple of young lads came from Korea as volunteers and for the first three weeks whenever they had free time they basically played computer games and they'd go to bed really early and they'd, and they'd sleep in late and those are, those are classic signs of someone who's suffering culture shock it takes time to adapt you try and avoid the situation that you're in by sleeping all the time by not eating particularly well by getting lost um, in video games or watching things on TV. And, you know, coronavirus has had that effect for a lot of people. All of a sudden, our culture as a country has changed the way we do things, how things happen, the way people interact together. So culture shock is quite a big thing that we need to understand a bit more. And that could have had an effect on our mental health at this time. Anxiety, depression, anger, fear. You know, a lot of those are kind of the words that are thrown out there. You know, there's a lot of helpful stuff online on the BBC, for example, about how to look after our mental health at this time. You know, those are key emotions that we all go through. And emotions are not bad and not wrong. God gave us all of our emotions. But it's what we do with them and how we manage them and how we cope with them. You know, they're all valid and we, they need to be expressed. So just five ideas that I've had about how to help, this, help our mental health during this time. Number one, acknowledge what you're going through. You know, I think I felt like I had to be strong for the rest of my family and for my kids. So I just put my head down and just got on with the job at hand. And then it really caught up with me. And I realized that I had to deal with the stuff that I was feeling. So you've got to acknowledge how you're feeling. It's okay to be scared right now. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be confused or alone, to feel a bit depressed, to be anxious about the future. They're all valid feelings, but you need to acknowledge them so that you can do something with them. So the second step after that is to share that with other people. So, you know, it, I always encourage people to have a mentor or somebody that they can go to that they can just download and get good feedback. Someone who can challenge you. Um, so find somebody that you trust that you can talk to. And if you don't have that person, try and find somebody. Be intentional about finding somebody that you feel confident, comfortable with going and talking to them. Telling them how you're feeling. And just talking about it can help so much. Number three, express what you're feeling and what you're thinking. You know, don't suppress it down. If you try and stop what you're feeling right now or, or try and just block out those thoughts, it's going to explode like a volcano at some point. And I think the government has already said that they're going to invest quite a lot of money to mental health for when the whole lockdown is finished because they have recognized that there's a lot of people that are going to need to pick up the pieces a little bit emotionally and mentally. But we want to be proactive and, and make sure that we're living right now and processing that stuff right now. So, you know, I've kept a journal for, tw yeah, 20 years now. I've kept a journal and that's my way of kind of expressing my thoughts, my feelings, what I'm doing. Sometimes it's just a scribble and a rant on the page, but it just helps me get it out. 
So find a way that you can express some people as painting or singing a song or whatever it is. Just find a way that you can express how you're feeling. So acknowledge what you're going through, share with somebody and express what you're going through in a way that helps you. Two more things. Number one, identify areas for growth. You know, we can look at this situation with a certain perspective and go, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. But we can also look at it from a point of view that actually we have a lot to learn now. You'll see there's a lot of articles online about how things should never go back to how they were before because they weren't right. There's a lot of good that we've learned from this in terms of being better families and friends and communities and neighbors. So find areas that you can improve in individually. I know for me, this time has taught me that I need to be more intentional about how I spend my time reading, for example, so I can learn from that and take that on. So what could I do now? Uh, what's the lessons I can learn now of how to walk with my mental health in a better way? That's really vital. Take it as an opportunity for growth. And finally, help others. You know, when we help others, it gives us a new perspective, a bigger perspective of what's going on. We're sharing of ourselves. You know, God doesn't just fix broken people. He uses broken people. And if you're feeling a bit fragile, a bit vulnerable yourself now in your emotions and in your mental health, if you walk with other people and help other people, that will begin that process of you restoring yourself as well. To feel that no matter how broken we feel or we, are, we feel that we are, God can still use us. So that's really important. So yeah, acknowledge what you're going through. Share with somebody. Express how you're feeling in a way that helps you. Identify areas for growth at this time and help other people who you think who are struggling. Really important to do that at this time. We need to be looking after our mental health. Now in the Bible, you know, David is a prime example of somebody who struggled at times with his mental health. He had incredible highs and very low lows. And he expressed that in the Psalms. So if you're struggling right now, read some of the Psalms. It will help you engage and connect with what you're feeling and thinking, just like David did all that time ago. And remember that Dave, David was called a man after God's own heart. So no matter what you're feeling right now or thinking, we can still have that desire in our heart to connect with God. And that is, that, you know, prayer and connecting with God is one of the most valuable things in helping our mental health. If you're struggling right now with your mental health, you feel yourself spiraling, please don't do this alone. Find somebody you can talk to. If you can't, or you feel like you want um, a confidential place that you can share about things, just drop a voicemail at the church office um, and that, that will get picked up and somebody will give you a ring back. Contact us through the website or through social media. My email address is andrewt at garstangfmc.org.uk. Drop me a line. We want to make sure that we're walking through this time together. Bless you guys. Hang in there.